teaching tool time. Slack is a communications tool for chatting or instant messaging situations. It's a bit more informal means of communication than email is. For many of you, these kind of communication applications might be understood best as modern GUI versions of IRC. There are hierarchies to help manage the communications in Slack, the top level of which is the workspace. In a given workspace, you can have multiple channels, as well as direct messages from one individual user to another, or direct messages within a group of users. The basic unit of information in Slack is the message. In a message, you can have text, images, links, files, pretty much anything. The messages can be organized to threads, which are analogous to a conversation in an offline communication. Threads help to declutter the messages viewed on a channel. The application is available as a web-based tool, a standalone application for most major platforms, as well as a mobile app for Android, iOS and Windows Phone. To get things started, navigate your browser to slack.com. If you are building your first Slack-supported course, you probably want to hit the Get Started button and select the Create a New Workspace option. After you've gotten the workspace set up, you might want to create some channels for your workspace. This can help you manage the conversations and keep the discussions easier to follow for everyone. Of course, you can tinker with the details as much as you want, such as give descriptions to your channels, edit your profile information, customize your application settings, or add plugin applications, but these can be done later as well. For now, what you need is someone to communicate with, so invite others to your workspace. Remember to send invites to the whole course staff, as well as all the students. All you need are the email addresses they actually read and use. You can make these invites in bulk, so don't worry about using Slack in a course with a larger number of students either. And there you are, all set up. Now install the apps you want for your computers, laptops and or phones. The idea is to be reachable. To send a message is a relatively straightforward task. Just check that you are in the correct channel and thread, type your message to the input box below and hit send. You can format your message with different modifiers such as underscores for italics, asterisks for emphasis, backticks for code or preformatted text, and of course use a variety of provided emojis if you so wish to do. To start a thread, you have to respond to an existing message. Instead of just writing your response below the initial one, click the Start a Thread button and type your message to the pane on the side. This way your response is not cluttering up the main flow of messages on the channel, but is visible only as a sidebar after clicking the Replies text below the initial message. Of course, you can check the arrived messages in a channel-by-channel -channel manner, but you can also check the most recent discussions with added messages from the All Threads selection on the left channel menu. This will show not only the latest messages in your threads, but also if you are caught up with the latest additions or not. If you wish to send a private message that is not visible to others, but only to you and the intended receiver, Click the person's name on the list below the channels and you can start your one-to-one -one discussions with them. This is particularly useful for conversations between teachers, if there are only two of them, on a course, or between teacher and a student if there are more sensitive issues that need to be discussed. By clicking the plus sign next to the message box, a dialog window opens where you can drag and drop a file of your choice. The file can be an image file, 
or just any other file that you want to share. Links can be embedded to the message text just by copy-paste and the URLs are converted to clickable links automatically. If you wish to show your status to others, you can click your own name from the top of the left menu, select Set Status and either select one of the pre-made options or type your own status message. This can be useful to notify your students when you are unavailable because of a meeting or such, so they won't expect an answer from you right away. Of course, these features are shown on the desktop app and web applications as well as mobile applications differ from their user interfaces somewhat, but not as much from the features they provide. You just need to look for the feature you need from the UI of your application on another platform. The UIs are pretty intuitive. The pitfalls of using Slack are mainly related to the fact that it needs to be used by both the teachers and the students alike. If you are passive in the teaching conversation as a teacher, so will the students be as well. And even if you are active and participate in the discussion, there still might be some students who will prefer to be in the background and not ask for help even if they would need it. Also, if you check the messages in Slack with the frequency you do your other communicating with students, it might not be enough. Since the nature of Slack is a bit more relaxed and conversational than other traditional means of teacher-student communication channels, the teacher needs to react to the messages from students in Slack, more like they would knock on your office door and require your attention the next few minutes. From the teacher's perspective, this can feel daunting at first, but think of it as a means of getting away with the thousands of messages in your email inbox by being able to react to them as they come along. It is beneficial to have more than one teacher to participate in the Slack discussions though, and therefore spread the workload required by the communication and being reachable for the students. The Slack shouldn't be the only method of providing support for the students though. Other means of communicating with them might be in order to provide some support for those situations where just a remote conversation is not enough. Traditional lab sessions, version control systems, and even email can be used to augment the avenues of support available. As a teaching tool, the teaching conversation is a recognized method of conveying information and making the students to think about the topic under study. Slack will enable to take this conversation to the digital forums and enable it to be less confined to a particular location and point in time. In IT field especially, as well as many others, the workplace-wide communication tools are used extensively in industry as well as in academia. The feedback from the students who have participated in courses where the teachers support their work via Slack has been positive. And noted that it teaches some skills that are directly transferable to the industry when they begin to work there. The lower threshold for communication that is partly done by the mindset of the teachers and partly by the support of Slack as a tool has made the students to be more active during their coursework and more inclined to ask for help if they needed it. And from the teacher's point of view, the students have become more as a part of the community than they would have been, should the majority of the interaction between them happen during a more traditional lecture setting. To get started with using Slack in your teaching, go to slack.com for the tools and your local teaching tools support team for how to make the most out of that tool on your course.